I've been in a gym getting my level up. Fenders getting gas, so I mash on the pedal. What the backboard I crash, slam the rock to a pebble. What the breeze from the past will assist your irregular breathing handle. Got your ankle in your knee in a disagreement. And now your balance taking off of bereavement. They want to know what I'll be cooking up because then they think we be even. But I know, look, this this, so I never seen I'm it now. Jim getting my level up. Fenders getting gas, so I mash on the pedal. What the backboard I crash, slam the rock to a pebble. What my team is the strongest, and we crush the competitors. Uh. Hey everyone and welcome to the Fast Break. I'm Tali Carr from the Atlanta studios. We have a bit of a, a very welcome return. The return of you, the fans, because over the weekend, Greensboro, North Carolina, Club Corbett, it's, it's like always a big thing, man. It's, it's like Scully and Man Boy, North Carolina A&T versus North Carolina Central. Things have been a bit subdued this year because of the lack of fans, but they let a few people in to Club Corbett. One of those people are Wally Pitt. He gets in all the time. Uh, Wally, a little different flavor. Uh, Governor Roy Cooper in the state of North Carolina passed an order recently that allowed a, a small return of fans to the venues. Uh, how are things in Greensboro? What, what, what capacity did it, did it feel like? Uh, I think 776 was the exact number. Uh, but what did it feel like for you with some fans in there, North Carolina a and North Carolina Central arch rivals? Man, Tali, it felt like the real thing. I can't lie. You know, we were all still up on the top bowl. And so I was right by the fans. I ended up pretty much just shooting from the student section. And man, that's 750, 770, whatever. They made it feel like double. I mean, it's the first time in over a year that any sporting event felt like the real thing, man. It was fun to watch. And it just, man, the, the, the guys on the court were almost, you know, the game started off so slow. I was like, are y'all not used to having fans out there? But man, it was fun. All of the Aggie prides. I got my A in front of my G, all of that, man. It was live out here. And uh, for the first time in a year, felt like the real thing. Welcome back to the Fast Break. I'm Tali Carr. Let's rejoin our Wally Pitt in Greensboro, North Carolina. Wally, there's been no bigger critic of North Carolina Central than North Carolina Central themselves. <laughs> Lavelle Moten, he was our special guest last weekend. He said, look, we are not a very good basketball team. Uh, they hadn't practiced a lot. They hadn't played a lot. So the expectations were a little bit low heading into this game against North Carolina A&T. But Wally, it actually turned out to be a really good game. Yeah, it was a really good game, man. Like I said, it started off slow. But once they got into it, man, it just felt like a typical Aggie Eagle Hoops classic. A lot of diving on the floor, a lot of, you know, jostle for the ball, a couple good alley-oops, a real big dunk from C.J. Kaiser, and then another real big dunk from Webster Fillmore on the other end. And, man, I just I can't hammer home how much this felt like the Aggie Eagle Hoops Classics of before. It's the final MEAC rendition of the Aggie Eagle Hoops Classic, and for the first time all year, the club was open. The Aggies pulled up in their cleanest retro apparel. The Jewels was out there glimmering, and old girl right here say you better wipe her down. And y'all know Bobby Schmurter just came home, and the student section went up and never came down like the Knicks snapped back in the video. Plus, we get our first look at the latest addition to the Club Corbett Madhouse, my dude Fly Glizzy Ultra Liddy in the hot dog costume. 
Now, a t was fresh off a big win in Durham earlier in the week, and one more will wrap up the MEAC Southern Division and give the Aggies pole position heading into the tournament in Norfolk. And for the Eagles, someone had to take home the dub, so why not us? And for the first time in a long time, it felt like HBCU hoops was really back. Now this one was back and forth for the whole 40, but a t was getting to the buckets early. Cam Langley with the and one. Next is Blizzy Blake Harris from three. Then it's Fred Cleveland, another three. And they loving that song in the club, Aggies up six early in the game. But here comes Central. CJ Kaiser misses the floater, Justin Watley tips it out to Jameer Moultrie who knocks down the track. Then it's Cam Langley, another drive to the rack plus a foul, that's a bucket, Aggies back up four. Justin Watley, pull up game strong, he knocks down a big three. Then it's Juice Perkins, he should have a whole lot of medals hanging off his jersey, cause that's a floor general right there. He finds Jonathan Maxwell off the bounce pass for some grown man work in the paint, that's a bucket, and a foul, equals down one with under three minutes left to play in the half. Juice Perk, showing off the court vision. He finds Ty Graves on the wing. The pump fake sends Blake Harris to the moon. Graves splashes down the three and NCCU is up two. Final seconds of the half, the ball finds its way into Quay Parker's hands. He knocks down the three. At the buzzer, the boy fly glizzy and the rest of the club go crazy and a t goes into the half up 28 to 26. Now halftime was a movie in and of itself. They were 700 something deep in Club Corbett, but it felt like a whole entire thousand the way they turned up at the half. Hey, on everything I love, Club Corbett never change. It's this type of environment that makes HBCU hoops better than all that unseasoned chicken they serving over there. And after the turn up in the stands, it was time to turn up on the court. Tyrone Lyons gets the steal. He finds Quay Parker and they blew the roof off the mother like Parliament. And it's still big Corbett energy on display. Cam Langley pokes the ball free. Ty Lyons gets it right back to Langley, who drives for the up and under the silkier than one of Hugh Hefner's smoking jackets. Ayo hey, Fly Glizzy, show him what he did to him, bro. Aggies pushed the lead to eight early in the second half. But the Eagles not here for it one bit. Justin Watley, he gets the steal and the slam with no emotion at all. Then it's Moultrie. Yeah, bruh, he got range range. The deep three gets NCCU back within three, and CJ Kaiser ties it up with a tough lay, and it's 37 all with 14 minutes left to play in the game. But the boy Cam Langley is built Burrow tough. The strong take off the glass, and one, yeah, that's grown man business right there. And so is this putback slam from Ty Lyons, and you might want to quit playing with him. The Aggie Eagle Hoops Classic getting real serious down the stretch. Here we got Fred Cleveland with the three. And Club Corbett with the juice. Then it's CJ with the pump, the cross. Hey, y'all wanna see a dead body? CJ Kaiser's monster dunk makes it a one point AT lead with four minutes left to play. Then it's Quay Parker, baseline. He finds Big Webby Fillmore who throws that thing down. CJ Kaiser looking for a double homicide, but Big Webby Fillmore says, no, nah, player. But CJ gets the call, knocks down both free throws, and the Eagles are up one. Quay Parker misses the three. Webster Fillmore gets the board, the big bucket, and AT is back up one with under two minutes left to play. CJ Kaiser looking for the go ahead bucket. He finds Jonathan Maxwell, but Cam Langley in the right place. He draws the charge, and the Aggies get the rock back with 30 seconds left to play. Fly Glizzy, getting Club Corbett ready for the crucial possession. Aggies running some clock. The Eagles foul Blake Harris, who makes the first, misses the second. Eagles get the rebound, they head up court. CJ Kaiser gets the ball. He stumbles, puts up an acrobatic shot that misses everything, and North Carolina a t gets the 55-53 win in the last regular season in-conference matchup between the Aggies and the Eagles. And the next stop for me is Norfolk VA and the MEAC Tournament.
I've been in the gym getting my level up. Fenders getting gas, so I mash on the pedal. What? The backboard I crash, slam the rock to a pebble. What? The breeze from the past will assist your irregular breeze. Welcome back once again to the fast break. I'm still Tali Carr. Hey, it's been a good decade of MEAC battles between North Carolina Central and North Carolina A&T on the hardwood. Look, they're probably still going to find a way to play each other. No one's going to walk away from that money and that fun. But it's not going to be for a MEAC championship anymore. North Carolina A&T is headed over to the Big South. They'll be there next season. Uh, Wally, you've been covering this matchup for several years. Wally Pitt joining us again from Greensboro. Uh, what are some of the games? Maybe one in particular, maybe a couple that stick out in your mind between North Carolina A&T, North Carolina Central, those Aggies and Eagles. Man, every time I shoot one of these games, there's like a moment or two or three that sticks out in my mind. But the one that always will stick out in my mind is 2017. Uh, Tariq Cohen came back. It was his rookie year. He had the ice grill. The whole football team was on the bottom level right at the inbound. And Tali, when I tell you, they were heckling the women's game in like the first second, the whole football team. I mean, you know, the security's like, get back, get back. They were respectful about it. But I mean, those boys heckled from the beginning of the women's game to the end of the men's game and they ended up storming the court and it was just great man like i think that was Tariq's first time maybe even coming back to a, a a t sporting event man like i said he had the ice grill it was just man what, what a time as they like to say if you don't know by now there ain't nothing like the aggie eagle classic and this time it's round one of the 2018 hoop season showdown coming to you from the corbett center in greensboro north carolina now they call it Club Corbett for a reason, cause it's 6,700 Aggies, all runway fresh and lit like big. This was one of the hypest atmospheres I've ever seen for a college basketball game. The 12-0 HBCU national champions had their own section under the basket. Comedian and G-Ho legend himself, Darren Big Baby Brand was out there stirring the pot. And the NFC North rookie of the year, the sauce boss himself, Mr. Walk It Like He Talk It, Tariq Takeoff Cohen was out here looking like money. Both teams came into this one with only one conference loss, both looking to keep their spot in the top tier of a super competitive Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. And despite the raucous environment, North Carolina Central came out hot. It was the life of Pablo early, as North Carolina Central's Pablo Rivas was an ultra light beam for the Eagles, scoring 11 of his 13 in the first half, including this well-orchestrated give and go for the jam. NCCU would lead by as many as eight in the first half, but the Aggies hopped on the comeback train. They got some big buckets from Femi Olajimi and Cameron Langley to give A&T a two-point lead late in the half. But could it all be so simple for the Eagles? Raekwon Harney with some of that Cuban link ice water in his veins. He takes Denzel Keys off the dribble, pulls up to shoot as he's falling away off the glass at the buzzer. That bucket ties it up at the half. Raekwon and the Eagles seemingly unfazed by Elijah Bell and the rest of the Aggies football squad as both teams went into the break through the same tunnel, I might add, tied at 28 apiece. Speaking of the Celebration Bowl champs, they were honored at half and their new coach Sam Washington was in attendance looking like a whole head coach. Don't worry football fans, September will be here before you know it. On to the second half, the Maroon and Gray set it off with a 20-3 run sparked by some tough play from Rasheen Davis. He drops 11 of his 15 in the second half and I just can't get enough of this dude's game. He's just an old school, give me that rebound, back to the basket, you gonna get these post moves big man. The Eagles go up by as much as 17 in the second half, but the Aggies start to feed off the energy of the crowd, especially from down there in that football section. Enter former football player Denzel Keys, the all-time leader in receiving touchdowns in school history, and whether it's third and long or you down double digits in the second half, get the ball to Denzel Keys and good things will happen. He drops 15 of his 20 in the second half as the Aggies begin to cut the Eagle lead down bucket by bucket. This strong lay and one by Malik Gantz gets the lead down to single digits. Next, Devontae Boykins pulls up for three. That cuts the deficit to six. Now we go back to Denzel Keys with the strong move in the post. Aggies now down only three. We see Tariq down there clapping his squad up. The Corbin Crazies really fueled this comeback. Their team went down, but they turned up. Four minutes left to play. Devontae Boykin spots up from the corner for the go-ahead three. 
splash. The Aggies would not lose the lead from there, and they would go on to win round one of this year's Aggie Eagle Hoops Classic 70 to 64. The Dog Pound storms the court, and a and moves to 13-9 overall and 6-1 in conference play. NCCU will have one more shot at a and on March 1st when the Aggies come to Durham on the final night of MEAC regular season play. For HBCU Game Day, it's your boy, Wally Pitt. I've been in the gym getting my level up. Fenders getting gas, so I mash on the pedal. What the backboard I crash, slam the rock to a pebble. What the breeze from the past will assist. Now they call it Club Corbett, but it felt more like a block party once Ibrahim Salah was on the floor. He wipes this Jordan Perkins layup off the glass, and Quad Copeland takes it rim to rim for the lay and one. The Aggies still over the stove whipping the work. Quad Copeland with the assist this time. He finds Tyro Lyons for the sweet up and under lay in. The Aggies starting to pull away. Cam Langley gets all types of horizontal with this tough bucket in the paint. He finished the night with 17 points. Amari Hamilton with the deep three pointer. Mr. A&T Tariq Cohen has the tray up after that one. Hamilton had 12 of them things for A&T in this one. But the real star of the half was a ts Malik Gans. He went six for six with 12 points, and it was fresh lay after fresh lay after fresh lay. This one here was an and one. And had he caught and boomed this one like he wanted to, I probably would have just took my camera and went home. Aggies in full control late in the game, up 18 after the Gantz alley tip. Ibrahim Salah letting us know the block party still popping after the club lets out. He even had Tariq out here giving them a tumbo finger wag. North Carolina a t gets the 74-52 win over NCCU, a season sweep of their rivals from Durham. And let's just say after the game, a ts Malik Gantz had something to say for y'all out there in game day nation. Hey, shout out to HBC Game Day. We won undefeated at the crib, man. Shout out to y'all. Okay, welcome back. It's the home stretch of the fast break. Thank you guys for hanging out with us, sticking with us today. We've talked about the MEAC. Let's jump over into Big South. Right now, the HBCU flavor in the Big South is Hampton. They're going to have some company next year with A&T, but let's talk about right now. Davion Ward, he's the top player for Hampton. And by his imagination and thought process, he was the top player in the Big South. But the voters said otherwise, and he disagreed on Twitter. We cannot talk about Twitter smoke without bringing in our resident Twitter smoke expert, Stephen J. Gaither, who's hanging out in Montgomery, Alabama right now. He, he's in my backyard, uh, keeping an eye on Alabama State with a busy weekend. Uh, Stephen, did Mr. Warren have a solid case as you step to the podium uh, with his thoughts of being player of the year in the Big South and being snubbed by not getting that award. Yeah, I, I definitely do think that he had a, a very solid case. Um, you know, there's always that debate when you're giving out these awards. Um, do you go, does it go to the guy who is the best player on the best team, uh, which is what it looks like the Big South decided that they wanted, wanted to do with Winthrop being a monster that they are. Uh, and then you have the, also the case of uh, does the of do they go with the player f that does the most has the most impact even if that team isn't as great and that in case would be warren uh warren averaged over 21 points a game this year um we're talking about Ham hampton and winthrop in that big south last year you know we went to the championship game and it was great to see Hampton make it there. It was a surprise. And Warren was a guy who was on the team, but he took a back seat like everybody else to uh, the big name players that they had on their team, Jermaine Merrow and otherwise. So this year he's come in. He's had a, a big impact. He, he needed to, they needed a big stepper, as they say, to fill the shoes of Merrow, who uh, was one of the all-time greats there. So he's been that all year. Um, while we saw him light up uh, some folks in the Big South, First time we saw him this year, he uh, he kind of didn't have a great game against Norfolk State, who is a really good team, and we saw that Hampton lost that game. So um, I think definitely when you talk about importance to team, I don't know that there's anyone more important than Davion Warren. Anytime they have success, Davion Warren's going to have to score a lot of points and carry a lot of the offensive burden. And so he definitely had a right to feel a certain way. But, you know, just like last year in the CIAA, you know, you can make a statement uh, when coming back and winning your championship game and be winning most outstanding players because that's the one that really matters, especially when you're talking about the big dance. All right, let's continue to defend this and, and argue it in the court of public opinion. If the video doesn't fit, you must acquit. Let's bring in Wally Pitt. You've seen a lot of Big South 
action behind the lens of your camera. How would you rate Davion Warren in, in your opinion, Wally, player of the year or nah? I mean, it's tough. And what I love about this is it brings up that age old debate. I used to say it a lot during the Kobe, Steve Nash era. You know, you've got Chandler Valdrum from Winthrop. Winthrop's lost one game. They are just smacking people down left and right. And when they're not doing that, they're doing everything they need just to get a win. And I just saw him last week and man, he's a leader. He averages like 12 points, seven boards, seven assists, right? So you've got the best player on the best team, a team that's out of here doing well. Then you got Davion Warren. He's averaging over 20 points a game. He's like third or fourth um, in the league in steals, averages about six or seven rebounds, like a legit stat line. And so it's kind of that age old basketball conundrum, you know, um, with Davion and them being the seventh seed. Is the production enough to beat a guy with 12, seven and seven? Um, when we talked about it in our chat, you know, Steve said he got robbed and I was kind of like, well, he didn't get robbed because the person who won it was a legit candidate. Um, would I have voted for him? Probably, but you know, we biased with the HBCU thing, so they probably shouldn't even give us a vote anyway. But Chandler Valdron is a beast. Uh, like Steve said, we saw him in the championship game last year. I saw him the other week and man, he just like does everything he needs to do to get his team a win. So, I mean, um, man, it's that age old debate. Like who, who do you go with? Do you go with the guy who fills it up or the guy who does what he needs? But I think, you know, if you're, if you're basing 12, seven and seven and a one loss record against 21, six and two steals and seventh in the conference, you know, that's a toss up and the race was close. Uh, I did look at, you know, how many first place votes and it was close. So, I mean, you know, Davion, you're always going to be our player of the year, <laughs> no doubt. But I will say Chandler Valdron, he, he deserved it as well, you know. I, I love the fact that in one sentence you said conundrum and in the very next sentence you said Davion and them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's how we do. Uh, you know, we got to keep it authentic. I, I got the book smarts and the street smarts, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we will leave it right there. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. HBCU Game Day, the fast break. For Stephen J. Gaither, for Wally Pitt, I'm Tali Carr. Enjoy your week. We'll talk to you next weekend. I've been in the gym getting my level up. Fenders getting gas, so I 